Guys, welcome to another amazing, based, and completely inhumanly possible, groundbreaking and universe-altering run, Tass of Spyro the Dragon. This one's going to be for one of the most legendary levels, Treetop. So let's go ahead, without further ado, get into it. This one is by Groksu321, recently just made just a couple days ago. And this, as many of you guys know, this level has a lot of supercharging in it. So we're going to be seeing a lot of supercharged sharp turning, as well as abuse of the supercharged momentum. Uh, but to those of you who don't know, a TAS, I always put this in my pinned comment, but I'll explain it here real quick. A TAS, oh, already going uh, an unusual, oh wow, this is not at all normally the way we would go for 100%. This is a 100% task of this level. Um, a TAS stands for Tool Assisted Super Play or Speed Run. I didn't even know you could get that guy right there. Like, I, I thought he had invincibility at that part. That Those guys, when they're running, they normally have invincibility, except for just small tiny moments i guess that was one of them you can jump through that that one little sliver right there the camera gets a little stuck but basically he went through the uh the fence right there and you can actually do that on a controller uh, as well you can do that but you just got to practice a little bit it is doable um as a human but yeah tool assisted super play means that he essentially went through this whole uh level going frame by frame and adjusting his inputs so that way it was it's as optimized as possible think of it as he's recording all of the inputs and then playing them back for you guys so this is sort of like a cooked up speed run by Groksu here. Very cool. Um, and if you stick around to the end of the video, by really cool, by the way, that he didn't get up. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm interrupting myself like crazy, but the way he landed on that supercharge ramp, it was very lucky that he didn't bonk. I'm sure he probably took uh, several attempts to make sure he didn't bonk on that. Uh, it perfectly abuses the momentum. And there's some of the supercharged sharp turning that we're talking about. This is a, a technique that's not humanly possible. I mentioned this in other Spyro tasks, but basically you have to hold one direction on the d-pad and another very specific coordinate uh one of several specific coordinates on the uh analog stick which is just it's so it's so precise for how many possible coordinates there are on the analog stick that a human will basically never do it but i, I challenge anyone to to do it again the way he lands there it's really hard not to balk in normal gameplay that's why we don't land on it like that part of the reason really cool to see him collecting everything backwards though and now I can understand a little bit why he went um, the way he did at the start of the level so that he could get to the supercharged ramp. Oh, and a little shout out to the stuck part right there. Um, I'll come back and show it later, but he did get the supercharged stuck for a moment. And there's a few, very select few points that you can get uh, go to in this game where the, you can endlessly supercharge into a corner or a wall and Spyro doesn't bonk. Really nice uh, uh, magic stairs as well. Just holding the charging jumps all the way up that. And shout outs to the chicken, Rotis. Can I see some rotises in the chat? I can't believe Groksu actually shouted out that chicken. That chicken is a absolute celebrity in my stream. I don't know why, it's, that chicken is just a legend. But yeah, just going through and looking at um, some of these things again, especially that little stuck point right there. Um, a little further right about at, uh, let's see if I find it, right about at this point right here. See how he gets stuck right there? There's not many places you can do that in the game because naturally Spiral will balk, but. It's just one of those weird, like, collision things, I guess, in this game where you can just, it just works, you know? That's just one of, I feel like that's one of many things in this game that just can't be explained. Like, you know, we, we train ourselves, especially with 3D platformers like this, to, to think that, okay, there's rules to this. Like, if you supercharge into a solid piece of collision, rotis, then, um, you know, you are going to bonk. But in certain cases, you don't. And it's just, there's weird anomalies like that. Other examples of that are, like, going through walls. Going through walls is actually an exceptionally rare case in this game. I'll just go ahead and play it back a little bit more. Um, going through walls is really rare in this game, which you don't even see in this task. But, like, in, for example, in Metalhead, in my 120% uh, world record, you'll see I try to go through the wall there. When Normally, when you get squeezed between an enemy and a wall, you proxy. But in certain spots, you do go through a wall, maybe through a misalignment or some some other, you know sorcery but you know it's, it's just cool that there are examples of things that break what we know as the, the established rules of how the game works and uh, things like charging into the wall infinitely like that uh, are, are one like kind of cool example of that and yeah once again to do all these turns here he is doing like very very precise coordinates on the analog stick switching every time he turns it's a different like you know switch of the coordinate and direction and everything and some coordinates will give you like a 45 degree turn others will give you more of like a 90 ish degree turn um, but yeah, it's like, I think it's about two or three different coordinates, uh, maybe four that are possible on the, uh, 
on the joystick. I used to think it was just one, but it's actually two to four. But um, regardless, that's out of like tens of thousands of possible coordinates that your analog stick could be. So it's just really, uh, considering that analog sticks wear away and they're not the most consistent things ever, you can't like notch it. I've had other people like in my comments for these tasks mentioned like, well, what if you what if you notch your analog stick like they do with like GameCube controllers? Well, it, because it's not like on the outer diameter, like the coordinate we want, it's like halfway in between, like just past the dead zone. So it's between the middle and the outer part. So you can't notch that. Um, so it's just, uh, and even if you did, um, because it's a precise coordinate, there's going to be variance from stick to stick that would make notching, uh, you know, not, not really feasible, realistically feasible, or at least it wouldn't last for a while. And in fact, when people do notch controllers for things like Super Smash Brothers Melee, for example, um, they have to re-notch their controller a lot because, uh, you know, before every tournament, they like re-notch it so that because the analog stick naturally wears away and the coordinates, the dead zone um, and the center of the stick will shift over time with use. So uh, pretty interesting thing about how analog sticks work and why it's just so impossible to hit certain coordinates like that. You might think like, well, four possible coordinates, you can do that. Even if it's really rare, you could do it. No, you fucking can't do that. <laughs> no, you can't. Um, there has been one example of a human doing a supercharged sharp turn and it's by Max Trigger. He has like a, uh, he has a Twitch VOD buried away somewhere of him, you know, trying to get a supercharged sharp turn just in, just for fun, like for like once. He did it once. It is the only recorded example of a human ever accidentally supercharged sharp turning. Pretty great. It's not something you can do by accident either. You have to hold one direction on the D-pad and another one on the analog stick. So it forces you to hold it with like a weird, like, you know, claw grip or something like that. Anyways, really cool 100% task right there. If there was anything that you think I missed from that, there was definitely some cool moments that I tried to catch. But anything you guys think I might have missed from that, let me know in the comments down below. But thank you, uh, Groksu, for the amazing task. So you got the cool uh, shades right here. And as promised... As promised, I'm giving you guys a bonus. If you made it to the end of this video, we're not at the end yet because we are going to be watching the cactus. What is the cactus? It is collecting every. Ta this is by Pete Guy 100. This is collecting every cactus back to back in Dry Canyon as quickly as possible as a task. This has been hyper optimized, quote unquote, by Pete to try to flame every cactus. Now, what is the point of a task like this? Well, <laughs> good question, <laughs> but it's pretty cool. There are a lot of cacti in this level. And honestly, if you remember these cactuses, these cacti, um, let me know in the comments down below. I distinctly remember as a kid with these cactuses, um, like just enjoying, like just sitting there flaming them and you don't really get to see, but like if you just stand there and wait, like they'll shake it off like that. <laughs> I just always found that so entertaining. I don't know what it is, but I feel like that's one of those like shared core memory things that every Spyro player has is like just flaming the cactus and then being like, hey, <laughs> like it goes like, K -k 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 -k. it's just so pointless, but it's so funny. But uh, I don't know. That was a great task, though. But can you but wait, there's more. Believe it or not, there's more. Don't go anywhere because there's actually a CAC 2S. There's an updated route. Now, this is shit starting to get intense. There's updated routing for these. I'll make this a little smaller so you guys can see. There's like updated routing. We can see the original route on the left and the new route on the right. I'll kind of just expand this a little bit. And uh, yeah, so he does, a he is actually optimizing this and, and saving time with it. You gotta love that uh, damage boost from the bird there, by the way. Really cool strategy. You see that a lot in Vortex speedrun. I tend to mention that during my task reaction, but if you like playthroughs of Spyro like this and you wanna see like a human example of like really crazy tricks and movement of this sort, do check out Vortex percent for this category. A lot of great Vortex runners of this game and, and very, very reminiscent of this style of play is what I would say. You know, the any percent and 120 percent main categories of this game really don't showcase the full like range of movement that this game has um, when it comes to damage, uh, momentum abuses, damage abuses, um, things like, you know, just uh, just abusing the mechanics to the full extent. Uh, you just don't really see from the main categories, except in small little bursts. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed these tasks, let me know in the comments down below. Leave if you made it to the end, leave a C in the comments for cactus for cacti or cactuses. <laughs> and um, I will catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I love you guys. Keep on tasking, keep on gaming, and I'll be keeping watching some of these uh, amazing playthroughs uh, in the next one. I'll catch you then. Peace. Damn.